All right, so here's the last step we're going to do. We're actually going to define the load case, and then we're going to export export the NASTRAN file, and then look at it. Okay, and actually we'll have to do a little editing to get it to run. Okay, so let's close this. Let's go back to our model. Here we are. Uh, the last thing we have to do is define the load steps. Okay, we've got the load collectors defined, but we have to organize them and say, okay, for this load step, I want to look at using these forces and these constraints. So the load step is done under analysis. I guess it's up here too, somewhere. Tools, I don't know what it is. Setup, maybe it's setup. Create, load step, yeah. It'd be the same. You get the same thing either way. So we do load step. We can give it a name. We can just call it tension, okay? Because that's what it is, it's a tension. Now, uh, the two that we're most worried about is picking the SPC and load. You can also we haven't talked about multiple point constraints or temperature boundary conditions. Uh, so we're going to pick these guys. So if you click on those, it activates those. And then here you've got an equals zero. This is the set ID. So you pick the equal sign, and this allows you to pick the load collector. So the SPC, we want to use all the loads that are defined on this SPC level. And for load, we want this to be the forces that are edge force. So th this, you can see, looks just like the subcase thing for NASTRAN, right? SPC equals one, load equals two. All right? And then you create. Leave this as linear static. You know, this allows you to do other types of analysis like normal loads and so on and so forth, but we're doing linear static. And there you go. So now we've got a new load step. And I believe I can do a card edit. And you can see it gives you uh, the subcase, right? And now, actually, on this little option thing, I can even do stuff like uh, set the output. You know, the little uh, optional statements in there. So we can set the output. We can set the displacement, because we like to do that one. We can set it to all. We can set, also, we like to see usually the SPC forces. And these are the different options. Let's see down here. We have displacement and all. And I can change the SPC from fall all to like sorting. We're not going to use that. We just keep it at all. And then we want to do. Well, we'll do stress. Those are those are by default. Stress and strain are usually put out there. And the last one I want to do is let's put the element forces. And I don't know whether they have, do they have force? There's four, E, F. They don't have force, but they have L force, which is the same thing, okay? And now you can go through and you can see the subcase. It doesn't show you which, uh, the set IDs, because that's inferred by the, the definition, but it shows you the output options. So we've got, we're outputting all the displacements, the element forces, the SPC forces, the strains, and the stresses. So a lot of times, like under strain, we would, or stress, we would export the, the Mises stress. So you could go down here and add in Mises, I think? Stress. You could change this to... No, that's not it. That changes where it is. Format, print, punch. That's not the one I want. Form, real imaginary. That's not it. Yeah, okay, whatever. I'll just leave it that way. That's fine. Okay? Then you hit return. Okay? And now we're pretty much done, okay? So we've added in the load cases. Actually, if you, if you, you, there are other, you can add in other unsupported cards in here, like a title. You know, sometimes we put in a title, and you can put in... give it a name, plate with hole under tension. That creates the title card. Okay, you can see it gets used. And actually under here, the optional card, you can go and you can edit the card. You can see it's the same way as it would look at NASTRAN, right? Um, I think those are probably the big ones, but you could put other ones in here. I don't think there's anything else in here that we've used. But anyway, 
that control cards has some good options in it too. All right, so now we're done. The model is fully defined. Everything's in there. Now we just have to export the NASTRAN file and then solve it in NASTRAN. So to export it, you go under File, Export, and we're going to export the solver deck, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. So export the solver deck. It's using NASTRAN, standard format, and now we'll just give it a file name. Okay. So I'm going to save it. Save it under where I keep all that stuff. Oh, it's, yeah, put it under Dropbox. Apply to FEA. Do it right here. Okay. So we'll call it um, plate dot pdf. Okay. And then there's actually export options. You can export everything or what's displayed and some of these other ones, but for the most part we just go with export everything. Let's just make sure it has export everything. Export all. Let's just make that make sure that it says export all. What you can do is you can export only the stuff that's displayed, but everything's displayed anyway, so do export all. And I think it exported it. So now if I go to um, the directory and actually look at it, I should see that BDF file. And do I see it? Here it is. Here's plate.bdf. So that's the input file that Hypermesh just wrote. So I can open it up with a text editor. And here it is. Let me bring it over here so I make sure I'm on the screen, right? So this is actually the input file that Hypermesh wrote. So you can see the, there's no problems generating all those um, cards, right? And that's the nice thing about it. But you do want to go back and just make sure that everything is still here, right? So, so what you'll notice is missing is the solver card. I never specified the solver, okay? And actually, I could do that under control cards. You can see here if I do control cards of solver, we can set it to statics and write solver 101. But let's say I didn't do that. You know, now I'd have to re-export it, but let's just say I didn't do that and I wanted to edit it later. All I need to do is just actually go into here and you can just type it in, oops, 101 yourself. So even if Hypermesh is not outputting exactly what you want, you always have the option to go back in and edit the BDF file. Okay. So this is why I make you go through and the pains of writing your own BDF files by hand to start with, because sometimes you just have to go in and do it. Okay. So there's the elements, there's the nodes. Oh, this is just some weird thing. I don't know what Hypermesh is doing there. Um, Here's the plate property. Well, I just got deleted out, but here's the plate property. Okay, P shell. Here's the material definition. Here are the SPCs, and here are the forces, and that's it. Okay, so this should be good. All right, we should be able to run this in Nastra. Okay, let's close this down. I think I should just save it. Let's just save it to be. Save side, saved, minimize it, and now I should be able to run that file using uh, NASTRAN just like we did it with the files that you made by hand. So we go under MSC Software, NASTRAN, and NASTRAN, and now let's pick the file. There is the plate.bdf, and we should be able to run it. And now I'll just go check that it didn't give me any errors. It's thinking. You can see here, it's actually starting to write the files to my drive. It cleans it up. Looks like it's done now. Here's the .fo6. Let's open that up and see what that looks like. Make sure I didn't get any errors. Here's the .fo6. 
and it looks good. Okay, it looks like it solved everything. So it's got all the quadrilateral information and all the displacement vectors, all the infos in here. Okay. Yep, stresses, all that good stuff. Okay, so it seemed like it works. Okay. Actually, I'll show you how we can, uh, in another video, I'll show you how we can actually post-process that stuff in Hyperview, okay? But I think we'll stop for now.